change. Living things change over time. Little changes and big changes. Whoa. That's evolution. Bill by the science guy. Inertia is a property of matter. T minus seven seconds. Brought to you by the most advanced life form on the planet Earth. Er, at least until something better comes along. Do you realize that every living thing on Earth has been changing for the last three billion years? That's why we're all so different. We are different. But as different as we all are, we all have a lot in common because we're all made of the same few basic chemicals. Now this process, this uh, thing that happens, is called evolution. And it's been going on for billions of years. Isn't that wild? That is kind of wild. So take a look at this. It's a picture of my parents. And I'm going to make a photocopy of it. Watch, watch. See, the copy looks just like the original, but not exactly like it. There are some small differences, because there's some small changes that happen every time you make a copy. The same thing happens when living things make copies of themselves, like when they have children. See, the children of living things are always different from their parents, but not completely different. I mean, they're related. They have the same genes. Now, genes are made of a very complicated chemical called deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribonucleic acid. Deoxyribonucleic acid. We usually just call it DNA. 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 Now, here's a model of a gene, of a piece of the DNA molecule. Okay. Now, the genes of you and me giraffes, fish, seaweed, our genes are all made of DNA. DNA. We're all made of the same basic chemicals. We're all made of DNA. Dinosaur genes are made of DNA. So you and I are the product of billions, billions of years, billions of years of tiny changes, tiny changes to our DNA. They happen every time living things make copies of themselves. Like every time we have children, when your grandparents had your parents, and when your parents had you. This process of change is called evolution. It's the reason we all look the way we look. So all the organisms on the earth, even though they seem to be different, are fundamentally the same. Their chemistry is all identical. And uh, they're just wrapped in different kinds of wrappings. Uh, us bacteria and us people and us plants and us protozoa, we're all the same on the inside. Life. How it began, no one knows. But it is thought that life was created by chemical reactions in quiet pools of water. How did life get started on Earth? Where did evolution begin? Well, near as we can figure, the ancient Earth was covered with the ocean a little over three billion years ago. And the ocean was a sort of primordial soup that living things got started in. Now, primordial, that's an old word that means very old. See, Scientists have done a famous experiment with primordial soup where we cook it. The experiment would look something like this. Put primordial soup in a big flask, cover it with what we believe to be the ancient Earth's atmosphere, which would be ammonia. And ammonia is the same stuff you smell when you clean a window. We cook it by heat from the sun, and this would be fresh water rain, which would come out of this boiling flask right here and light from primordial thunderstorms. The thunderstorms make the molecules change and rearrange themselves. And eventually, we have found that we can reproduce tiny pieces of deoxyribonucleic acid, tiny pieces of DNA. DNA. The very building blocks of life. The blueprint for future generations. Can be made with an experiment somewhat like this one. So the primordial soup was very much like the ocean is today. Look at all these living things. The ocean's full of them. 
You and I are living things. The primordial soup is still cooking. DNA is a molecule containing the genetic message, the blueprint for future generations. This genetic code is the same for all living creatures, for all life, which means that there is really only one form of life on Earth. Those frugal boy jeans that you're wearing? Well, actually, these jeans are custom-made to fit only me. These are just one of hundreds of genes that are found on each and every one of my 46 chromosomes. Now, each gene and a chromosome... Hey! This is DNA! These are the chromosomes I'm talking about! Frugal boy about. jeans for those who have evolved. On a desolate world, where evolution has gone wild. A lone astronaut faces sure extinction unless she can learn to adapt. Trapped in a land where crustaceans rule with an iron claw, it is the human who will have to evolve to survive on Planet of the Crab. Progressing from simple, spineless shapes to more complex forms, animals develop a backbone and receive a first vertebrae. If you have four legs and you like to gallop around, maybe you're a zebra, or a springbok, or a giraffe. Now, if you're a giraffe, why do you have such a long neck? Well, please, consider the following. Now, when you watch giraffes eat, you'll see that they eat leaves up high in trees. That's what giraffes do all day. They eat leaf tree salad, leaves that other animals can't reach. Now, you might think that if you were another animal and you wanted to reach those high leaves, you'd just stretch your neck, stretch your neck, stretch, just sort of stretch. And then eventually, you'd be able to eat leaves up higher in trees. Well, it doesn't work that way. In order to have a slightly longer neck, you have to be born with one. Just slightly longer. Just slightly longer. See, having a slightly longer neck, just slightly longer, allows you to reach leaves that are slightly higher. Slightly higher. And that gives you a slightly better chance, slightly better chance of having enough to eat, which gives you a slightly better chance, slightly better chance of having giraffe kids. Or, uh, gids. See, it because it begins with a G. <laughs> Anyway, the kids with slightly longer necks, just slightly longer, have a better chance of having kids with even longer necks. And eventually, after millions of years and many, many generations, giraffes ended up with pretty long necks. This is the process of evolution by selection. Small changes with each generation. So big changes take thousands of generations, millions of years. And that's how giraffes get to have such long necks. Maybe these guys are onto something. Looks good. Thank you for joining me. I'll consider the forward. Shallow waters, where they are in close contact with the bed of the sea, fins of the fish gradually disappear, and crude legs take their place. Near the shores, fish slowly lose the use of gills and develop lungs. My name is Lisa White and I'm a paleontologist at San Francisco State University. I study fossils, particularly shells of organisms that lived millions of years ago. These organisms tell us lots of things about evolution, how creatures have lived in the past and how they've descended through time. This beautiful creature is a pearly nautilus. It lives in the open oceans. It's had a long history of evolution. If we look at this big guy here, oh, I can hardly lift it. You can see that in the past, these kinds of organisms have been much, much larger. This is an ammonite, and it ruled the ocean 70 million years ago. The coolest fossils, though, are the microfossils, the ones that are so tiny, you need a microscope to see, and they're in rocks as ordinary as this one. 
These are the fossils from the rock. And this is what they look like when we examine them under the microscope. You can see that they're different shapes and sizes. Some are in circles and some are long. And they're all different kinds of shells. And when we examine them through the geological layers, we can interpret past climate and how these plants have evolved. So these fossil plants tell us so many important things about the ocean, and so do the fossil animals. Paleontology is the study of life through time. I get to try and understand the principles of evolution, how creatures have changed through time, and maybe even how creatures may continue to change in the future. Legs grow sturdier, and animals become land water creatures called amphibians. Other creatures emerging from the waters make the land their home become reptiles and grow scales, such as these. Living things evolve, living things change, but not that fast. Now here's a dam that humans put here, and over here is a fish ladder. And here's the idea. Fish can swim from step to step and get up the ladder and get up past the dam. Do you see what I'm saying? But do you see one fish, one big salmon over there? I mean, salmon are big. you see one? Not one. I mean, salmon are like this. You think I'm telling you fish don't know they're big fish. If they were over there, you'd notice them. And some people say, the sea lions are eating them. Well, the sea lions might eat a few fish. Maybe they eat a lot of fish. But they don't eat this many fish. I mean, it's a lot, lot of fish that aren't getting past the dam. They aren't getting up to the this fish ladder because humans have changed their environment. Humans have let silt come downstream, chemicals get in the water, so they dam the stream up all together so the salmon can't swim past. And you know what else? It's not one person. Millions and millions of humans slowly degrading the streams made the environment not so good. So you got no salmon. You know what I'm saying? Because humans have changed the environment. Now, a fish, a fish could adapt. It could evolve. But it would take millions and millions of years. It's not going to happen in a hundred years. It's not going to happen in a weekend. It takes a long Long time! Humans have changed the environment faster than most living things can keep up. The more places something can live, the better chance it has to survive. Like this moss. Over the past three billion years, moss has evolved so it can live almost anywhere. Check it out. Put some moss in the wind. Add some milk. Yum. But whatever you do, don't drink it. Don't drink it. Whatever you do, don't drink it. I said, don't drink it! This is your announcer reminding you, don't drink it. Take your moss milk outside. It poured in some cracks on the sidewalk, or on some rocks, or anywhere. Wait a few days and take a look. No matter where you put the moss milk, it grows. Wow! Moss. It's soft, it's simple, and it's evolved to live everywhere. 